Hi guys, uh, this is a demo on using Peppercura Designer 3. Um, it's a software program developed by Tamasoft. And what it will let you do is, if you import a 3D object, you can separate it. Um, it will unfold it for you into a two-dimensional piece. So um, I went over the basics of this in class, but I'm just here to show you um, a little more in, in a little more detail um, how to use the software. So when you open it, this is what you see. This is your layout page. Um, on this side, it'll show you how your how your parts are going to be laid out um, or flattened. And in this side, it'll show you your model. So the first thing you should do is open um, a three D a three dimensional object. Um, I find that OBJ files work best, but Peppercura also does support other files like STL files as well. And whenever you import a new model, it's going to ask you um, for a couple of settings. Um, so when this opens up, don't flip. So you're going to click no flip. And it's going to ask you to adjust the sides or the, or the what's it called, the, the positioning of your model. So in this case, this is my front, and the arrow comes out here, so I don't need to change that. If you do need to change it, like let's say this head is where you wanted the front view to be, you would click on the green side and it would, and it would change that for you. Like you see, if I went back now, this side is now the front, but I don't want that, so I'm going to change it back to that side. Now it's going to ask me to adjust the bottom. This is the open bottom, as you've seen this model in class before, but I'm not, I don't want to change that either, so I'm just going to go next. And then inverting the model, uh, what that means, it's it's basically, um, it'll turn the model inside out, but I don't want that to happen, so I'm just going to click no invert. Um, so what you're looking at right now is your model. Um, if you want to rotate the model, all you have to do is right click, and then drag your mouse, and it'll rotate. Um, zooming in, you just um, scroll in and out with your with your zoom wheel. Um, panning is you hit the scroll wheel and then just drag it around. That's how you pan. So that's how you move your model. Now if you're not very picky, you can just use the automatic unfold feature here. So if I hit that right now, you'll see it's going to ask me um, to lay out my size. So let's say this is fine. Everything here is the way I want it to be and I just hit OK. It's going to unfold everything for me automatically. And like I mentioned in class, Peppercur will automatically unfold it to the least number of separate parts. So if I if I click this, you see the red box around it indicates that that's one entire part. All the little pieces are connected together. But when I zoom in, you can see that it's not always the best layout. Um, oh, on this side, to pan, you left click and drag around. But in little areas like here, um, these tabs are way too small. If even if you printed this or cut or um, cut this out, uh, these tabs wouldn't be large enough to connect to the adjoining sides. So obviously, um, this feature is useful. But if you have some sort of like um, not as rounded shape where it's like not as far apart, it's not the best to use the automatic unfold feature. But that is to your preference. Um, if you find that it works good. Oh, well for you then you don't need to worry about that also whenever you click on a piece um, in, on your page layout side it'll show you or indicate where that piece is on the model so that's kind of a useful feature if you need if you're lost or you don't understand what part belongs to which side or what part of the model so I'm just gonna undo the unfold right now and you'll see when I when I click the undo unfold it'll it's gonna ask me to apply open edge info to 3d model so what that means is all these open edges, so the dotted lines here are sides that aren't open, they're connected to each other because they don't have to be cut. Um, but instead, all these other sides that are open right here along these edges, it's going to show you where they are on the model like you see here. So on the model, it kind of explodes it for you like that. But once I click this, you'll see those lines become outlined in orange, indicating that they're, um, they're the areas where the model's been cut. So. I mentioned this in class as well, but so let's say you think, oh, I'd rather separate this piece by piece, chunk by chunk, so I know that um, whatever, however it unfolds to you, it's going to be 
optimized for me or it's going to be easiest for me to assemble. So you, what you would do then is you would use this slicing tool where it says it looks kind of like a utility knife and it says specify open edges. So when you click that, you can see that if an uh, error has already been highlighted orange, you can set that so it's not a cut line. So now it's not orange anymore. So I can remove these lines. So when I unfold this now, it wouldn't um, mark these as open edges. These would all be connected. But obviously there is some kind of issue here if you see like there's a possibility that this piece couldn't be laid out flat without a cut in it. And Pepper Curl will let you know things like that. So um, the setting I have it right now, I've, I have it so I just pick a single edge so I have to click on one individually. But if you use this feature, you can actually mark it between points. So you could say between this point and that point, I want another, what is this? Um, sorry about that. Um, so it's going to ask you to specify points in between where you want to make the line. So if I hit that point and that point, you'll see it just connected everything along that line or along those points. Um, I think it's easiest to work with a single edge, but that's completely up to you. So let's say um, you, you decided to specify all the open edges yourself. So you don't want to unclick all of these individually because that would just take a really long time. What you could do instead is if you go into the 3D menu, it says reset edge properties. So if you hit that, everything goes out. Um, so there's no more cut lines that are specified. Um, if you guys are curious as to what these lighter blue lines mean and what the darker blue lines mean, so if you look carefully in the model, these are points where the folds are recessed or like inwards. That's called the valley fold. So if I were to rotate it, you see that parts recessed inwards. And whereas the darker blue lines indicate that the model is um, folded outwards or it's called the mountain fold. <laughs> so Peppercare automatically knows about all those features for you. So you can go ahead right now and just specify all the open edges yourself. So for example, if I think that everything makes a lot more sense to be connected in a smooth line, I could just click on these points and next time it unfolds it for me, it knows to unfold this out as one single strip. So it should be a lot more easier for me to connect this strip down and then I can do another strip down right here. So you have to be um, a little smart with the way you do this because, for example, if I start to click outwards into here and I said, oh, that's doable, like this huge chunk here, you actually don't know for sure if this will open up nicely. So um, just be smart. That's not to say that it wouldn't work out, but you really have to think about it. Your best bet really is to have it so it's just single... Um, single folds down so you're not clustering separate um, triangles or folds together. So here you see it's actually just one. So you could still lay this out flat even though it doesn't look like I went completely down. This is just one fold line against this piece. So there, would, there shouldn't be any issues with that. So if I did that, um, let's say this was just the problem area. Obviously the problem area is here, but let's just say that this was the problem area. And if you said, oh, I'm okay with Peppercura automatically unfolding everything else, what you could do now is then just hit the unfold button and it's gonna ask you about the <coughs> layout again. But we don't have to worry about that right now. Um, you'll see that the points that I specified, it cut them out right here. And it show if you click on the model, it'll also show you where it is on the page. So if I zoom in here, I don't, I'm not really worrying about, I'm not really worrying about um, pieces like here where tabs are too tiny to touch each other. Um, so I know that these parts are fine. Um, so the issue is because if you see right here, um, this little thing that sticks out is actually a tab for, let me zoom in closer for you guys this piece right here. So it is really small, so you could actually just treat this as one um, piece because this fold is just too small that it would actually really make a difference. But 
Pepperker is going to try and identify everything based on what your op imported object looks like. So that's actually a tab for that small cut there. So because of things like that, you have to be careful. Um, another way to separate your pieces uh, without specifying the edges um, on the model itself is you could actually disjoin pieces that are already laid out for you. So for example, I'm zooming in right here and I see that right here is a problem area. This tab um, kind of feeds into the other side, um, this one as well right here and here. And I can see these are all open edges. So wherever there's tabs or or no tabs, it means that they're open edges. The dotted lines means that they're fold, they're fold lines, right? So I see that this piece is open here as well as this piece. So the only thing connecting this chunk to this chunk is this one fold line here. So if I separate it right here, I won't have that issue between these tabs right here and over here. So then what you want to do is if you go over here, it says divide or connect faces. So if you click on this button, you can click on any of the dotted lines. Um, this, the red one means that they're joining. So you see how the arrows are pointing to each other. It means you don't want it to be cut there. I'll show you that a little later, but for right now, any piece that isn't connected, I mean, that is connected, it'll highlight to green. And when you click on it, it separates those pieces for you. So it's really smart in the way that it lays things out. So right here, you'll, you also see that there's a really small line connecting here. I mean, separating these two pieces here, but obviously it's not big enough for you to be able to see the tab. So in this case, I would separate it right here. And then now you have these two tabs that go together. So like I said, um, if it's not a connected piece, so if it's not a fold line, if it's an edge line, what Pepper Curl will do for you is connect those pieces. So let's say like I really didn't want to deal with this piece here. I really want it to be connected right here. If I click on that, it should connect it for me. But because of that, it compensate it compensates differently. So since I connected that piece, it separated these two pieces because obviously it can't all be laid out flat. Um, so, you know, just think about what you're doing before you split pieces up like that. And then go back to your selection tool to just move the pieces around. Um, it'll, if you, when you export this, it's going to export exactly how you lay it out on the page. So obviously, like, even though these are separate pieces, like I can move this one separately. Um, if I leave it like that, it's just going to print as like all clumped together so make sure you're moving your pieces away you just have to click and drag those pieces away all right so let's say um you've already unfolded all your pieces but it's not the size that you want it to be um the size is actually the first thing you should worry about when you import it but let's say you made a mistake and you realize oh i need to be bigger than i actually thought it needed to be so what you could do there then is you would go to um recalculate parts layout under the 2d menu right here and then again this is the same menu that pops up when you hit the automatic unfold in the beginning so let's say i want my assembled size to be 300 meters everything's in meters and i mean millimeters you can't change these units um but it will scale everything for you automatically so just choose one dimension you want to focus on so if I hit that, you see automatically all the pieces got bigger. Um, I mean, they didn't necessarily get bigger, but you see that the number of pages that are laid out on the screen are more because um, for a piece that big, it wouldn't fit on the page. So another thing you have to worry about is when you do something like that is now you have parts that are overlapping or bleeding into other pages. Um, you can specify the page size. Um, I'll get to that in a bit, but whenever you unfold your objects, you need to make sure that they are not going across into another page because um, right here, for example, this wouldn't come out as a single piece. It'd be part of this piece, but on a different page. So just keep those things in mind. So if you want to change the paper settings, I think the default setting is A4. Yeah, it is A4 because um, that's what I guess that's what's used over in Japan. But obviously you want to change that to letter size. Just click OK and it automatically redimension the page for you so everything's in letter size. Um, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you guys have any other questions, you know, definitely feel free to contact me about it. And if you guys think you would benefit from lab hours or 
if you're in the clusters and you need help, um, definitely shoot me an email and we can work something out. Um, other than that, um, good luck, I guess. Oh wait, before you before I go, um, obviously save your file as a regular Pepecura file. So if you hit save, it's gonna say uh, a dot pdo file, which is the Pepecura designer file. Um, but if you're also exporting, um, whether you're printing or laser cutting, um, you can if you're printing, you could just um, save it as a PNG or a bitmap file. Um, and you could just print it right there. But if you want to laser cut it, obviously you need to um, export as a vector format. Um, from my experience, the what I got to be the best results was the DXF file. And what that's going to do, it's going to save this entire thing um, together. Unfortunately, it doesn't separate the pages for you, but you can open a DXF file, I believe, in... I'm pretty sure CorelDRAW does take DXF files because that's how I uh, laser cut mine. And um, you could go into any kind of CAD program to open a DXF file um, and then just specify different pages. Just make sure all your pieces are out properly on um, or laid out properly on the pages before you try and laser cut them. And that's pretty much it. Um, if you want to show if you're printing this instead of laser cutting and you want to know the numbers between between the pieces, you can go back to, sorry, I was really quick, but to the 2D menu and show edge ID and I'll show you the numbers between page, um, between the pieces. Um, so that's Pepecura Designer. Um, and yeah, sorry I added a couple things last minute, but hopefully this was helpful for you guys and good luck.